for today's lecture we are going to go for graphical solutions to linear programming problems so directly we are going to go with a numerical statement goes like this solve the linear programming problem graphically and now this is the structure of a, a linear programming problem so actually this particular numerical is a combination of three things this first thing this is called as objective function everyone please note down because this will help you all for our fourth unit because fourth unit is totally dedicated to linear programming problems with respect to simplex method so in that unit all the numerical statements will be in this particular format so try to understand what basically is the statement and what are the three combinations so the first equation that you can see that i have underlined maximize z is equal to 4x1 plus 10x2 it is called as objective function then further if you check out it is mentioned to the constraints so this three equations they are forming the three constraints and lastly this one it is mentioned x1 less than equal to 0 and x2 less than equal to 0 these are the conditions so your linear programming problem is a combination of objective function constraints and condition and every time when a question will be asked on this will be getting a likewise combination okay if you have noted down this now we'll go on to the solution before that there is one more thing that you should know in this particular statement how many constraints we have now yes how many constraints are there right three constraints are there so this is the first constraint 2x1 plus x2 is less than equal to 50 second constraint is 2x1 plus 5x2 should be less than equal to 100 third constraint is 2x1 plus 3x2 should be less than equal to 90 so these are the three constraints given now in this particular lpp this x1 and x2 are called as variables you can note down you can note down somewhere x1 and x2 are variables this values right hand side values of the constraints are called as the constant values and they are denoted by b we can call this as b1 this as b2 and this as b3 i hope that everyone has got the different notations that we have here right i'll repeat again the lpp is a combination of objective function then constraints and condition then this x1 x2 are variables this right hand side constant values are called as b values everyone has got yes sir so let us proceed now now usually we'll be solving this using analytical way in our fourth unit but timing for this particular unit we are going to solve it graphically now there is a condition for graphical method also if a given lpp is of two variables exactly two variables then only we can go for 
graphical approach then only we can solve the given lpp lpp means what short form of this linear programming problem so if the given linear programming problem is having only two variables not more than that then only we can go for graphical solution if we are having more than two variables we will not be able to find out its solution using graphical method so take care of this and you can note it down somewhere that graphical method is up applicable only for a two variable linear programming problem what is variable it's x1 and x2 are the variables okay so let us proceed into the solution now now compared to the analytical approach graphical approach for the solution is very easy let me erase all this so while going for the graphical approach what we have to do is that if we check out here solution we have to consider the first constraint what was the first constraint first constraint is 2x1 plus x2 less than equal to 50 what to do with that convert that in equality constraint into a equality constraint means what if we check out here it was mentioned that 2x1 plus x2 is either equal to 50 or less than 50 what we have to do is that we have to instead of this less than equal to replace it by equal to see here right if we we'll check out after doing this what we'll do put down x1 as 0 in the above equation now if we we'll put down x1 here as 0 find out what will be the value of x2 you are getting so the value of x2 will be 50 is it correct yes sir yes sir now in the same equation what to do next put x2 as 0 so if we we'll put x2 as 0 here what we are getting equation 2x1 is equal to 50 and if we we'll simplify it what we are getting x1 is equal to 25 right so from this we have got the values of x1 and x2 and these values we are going to use to plot the graph so this is the first set of x1 and x2 that we have got from the first constraint now similarly go for the second constraint in the second constraint if we we'll check out this was the second constraint 2x1 plus 5x2 is less than equal to 100 again instead of this less than equal to replace it by equal to even if you are in the given numerical it is greater than equal to you have to replace it by equal to and if already it is equal to keep it equal to so now we are 2x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 100 that is what we have used and then in this equation put down x1 as 0 first so if we we'll put down here x1 as 0 you are getting 5x2 is equal to 100 and if we we'll simplify x2 is equal to 20 that is what we are getting now put x2 equal to 0 Now what will happen? We are getting 2x1 is equal to 100, and if after simplifying, we are getting x1 is equal to 50. So this is the second set of values for x1 and x2 we are getting from the second constraint equation. Similarly, go for the next constraint. Last constraint we have three constraint, right? So last constraint is 2x1 plus 3x2 less than equal to 90. So the equation that we will be using is 2x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 90. Now again same process you have to follow. Put x1 equal to 0, you'll be getting x2 as 30. Put x2 as 0 in this equation, you'll be getting x1 as 45. This is your third set of values for the variables x1 and x2. So three sets we have got. time being don't concentrate on this this is the final solution so after working out with the given constraints three constraints we have got this three sets first second and third check out the values that we have got in this sets we have got 50 25 20 50 30 45 and according to this values now you have to work out a graph and set a particular scale which will accommodate this all values right so if you we'll check out here i have used the scale of 1 cm is equal to 5 units 
right so now how to approach for the graphical solution we have to mark x axis we have to mark y axis on x axis we have to mark x1 values on y axis we have to mark x2 values now by the time you have understood the statement that i have asked you all to remember that graphical approach for graphical approach if the lpp is of only two variables then only we can go for graphical approach and by the time you have understood why that particular statement is true because here in graphical approach we have two axes x and y and on that axis we are marking the variables so if we have two variables then only we can perform this graphical solution right got it so everyone has understood up to now yes yes sir so now as discussed on x axis we are going to plot x1 values on y axis we are going to plot x2 values now check out the first set that we have got first set that we have got is x2 is equal to 50 and x1 is equal to 25 please remember x1 is 25 and x2 is 50 what to do here on x axis what was x1 what was the value of x1 for the first set 25 so the value of x1 for the first set was 25 so on x axis we are going to plot x1 value so here for 25 you have to mark your x1 value and what was the value of x2 50 50 Fifty. So here on y axis, mark x two for fifty, right? Then these two points we have got, which correspond to the first constraint. By this line, if you check out this line which has been drawn connecting these two points, this is the line that you have to draw connecting the two points. And this is called as, or we can name it as first. constraint line right this is the first constraint line that we are getting and with that if you we'll check out here some arrows are shown pointing towards origin see here now why we have shown arrows pointing towards origin for this first constraint line for that what we have to check it check is in the given in the given constraint what was the sign of the constraint it was less than equal to if for example this is your graph this is your origin here we mark our x2 coordinates here we mark our x1 coordinates and if for a particular constraint now for the first constraint you have got here I will join it by line. Now, if the sign is less than equal to, then you have to show the arrows pointing towards origin. If the sign is yes greater than equal to, then you have to show arrows pointing away from the origin. Likewise, got it? Now, what is the significance of these arrows that we discuss later on? But right now, just try to understand why this arrows we have shown pointing downwards. Got it? Because here the constraint sign is less than or equal to. If it is greater than equal to, we have to show arrows pointing away. Yes. So now, first constraint line we have drawn. Check out the second set of constraints. Variable here x one is. 50 x2 is 20 so plot x1 as 50 here on x axis and x2 as what was the value of x2 20 20 right so plot or mark here x2 as 20 on y axis join this two points call this as second constraint line 
and again if you we'll check out here the arrows we are going to show pointing towards origin why because even for the second constraint the sign is less than equal to and that is the case for third constraint also now for third constraint this is the set of values we have got x1 as 45 and x2 as 30 so x1 is 45 so on x axis mark 45 And x2 is 30, so mark 30 on y-axis and join this. This is your third constraint line. And again, show the arrows pointing downwards or towards origin. I hope everyone has understood up till now what we have done. Yes, everyone has got. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now, after plotting all the constraint lines, we have to draw a feasible region. Repeat again. We have to draw a feasible region. Considering this constraint lines and their direction arrows. With the help of this constraint lines and direction arrows, we have to draw a feasible region. Now, how to draw it? This particular constraint line, first constraint line. Observe the first constraint line. What is this first constraint line telling us? That your feasible region lies below this. This arrows are pointing towards you, right? This feasible region lies below this. Area below this line, there is no need of checking above this particular line for the feasible region. That is what this first constraint line is indicating us. But there is again a second constraint line. What that constraint line is telling us with this green line? See this green line, and pointing arrows are towards zero. What are they telling? That your feasible region lies beyond this particular, below this particular. Line. There is no need of checking above it. So it is giving more precise results compared to this first constraint line. So though this first constraint line was telling that your feasible region is not above this, further second constraint line is telling that even there is no need of checking this portion. Why? Because this line is telling that check below this for your feasible region. And there is. Again, a third line, third constraint line, which is also giving instructions that don't check your feasible region here. Check it below that. So, I hope that everyone has got by your eye observation. Logically, you have to find out the correct feasible area. So that feasible area is rightly marked by these hash lines. And I hope that everyone has understood. Why you have not taken this area? Why you have not taken this area? Why you have not taken this area? Everyone has got, and why we have selected this area only? I hope everyone has understood. So this is the feasible region that we have got. Got it? Everyone has got up to this. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, once we have got our feasible area, to find out the feasible solution, we have to mark the corners of this feasible area. So first of all, this will be one corner. At this point, x1 and x2 both will be equal to zero. Is it correct? Then mark the second corner of that area. This is the second corner. Then mark the third corner. Then mark the last corner. And it is not like that. The feasible area will always have four corners. You may have more than four corners also, right? So these are the four corner points of feasible area we are getting. And now what to do? First of all, let me erase all this now. Yes. So, 
so yes this is all the four corner points that we are getting of that particular feasible area now give some nomenclature to this corner points so we'll call this as a point we'll call this as b point we'll call this as c point we we'll call this as a d point but right? absolutely depends on you what kind of nomenclature you are going to give i have called it as a b c d you can call it as p q r likewise anything any notation you can give and in any way you can give clockwise anti clockwise no issues but time being keep it uniform so here we have used a here b here c here d c we refers to this point what to do find out what are the coordinates for a what are the value of x1 and x2 for point a yes what are the values of x1 x2 for point a 0 0 0 0 0 right simultaneously find out what will be z at a then z now to find out z check out the objective function now this objective function will come into play objective function is what z is equal to 4x1 plus 10x2 write down here z is equal to 4x1 plus 10 x2 now to find out z at a in this equation of z put down the coordinates of a as x1 and x2 and already we have got the coordinates of a as 0 0 if you put down here x1 and x2 as 0 z at a you are getting it as 0 right what is the next point b point now for b point what are the coordinates What are the values of x1 and x2? X1 is yes, x1 is equal to 25, right? Is it correct? Yes. X1 is x1 is 25. X2 is zero. For this point, as this point lies on x-axis, obviously the y-coordinate will be zero. So now put down these values of x1 and x2. Where x1 refers to x coordinate, y1 x2 refers to x2 refers to y coordinate. Put down these two values here now in this z equation. We'll be getting z at b. Yes, what will be getting z at b now? Hundred. Right. Similarly, find out the coordinates of C. For C, x1 is coming 19 and x2 is 12.5. This is what I have got. You can check out what you all are getting. So if we put this x1 and x2 here in this equation, z at C, you should be getting 199. And last point is the D point. For D point, the coordinates are yes. Anybody? What will be the coordinates for D? X one, X two values. X one will be equal to yes. Zero. X one will be equal to zero because that point lies on y axis. And what will be the value of X two? Twenty. Twenty. Okay. So put down these coordinates here. Values of x1, x2 here in this equation. Z at D. You are getting it as 200. So this is how we have got the z values for all coordinates. Right? This is how we have got the z values for all the corner points. Now, what is our aim? If we check out the objective function, our aim is to maximize. We have to maximize the value of z. So, what to do now? From these four z values, check out which is the maximum value of z. Yes, maximum value of z is at which point? Maximum value of z. You are getting it at. D point, right? So therefore, your Z max 
is equal to 200 means the data that you got for z at d this one this is your z max at x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 20 this is your solution this is your graphical solution